Hello Freedom Seekers, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. Coming to you today on a, well, not so beautiful Friday morning here in southeastern Michigan. We are expecting uh, anywhere from five inches to a foot of snow today, and we've got to get ready. So today we're going to be talking a lot about this guy right here. This is our Polaris Sportsman 450 HO. It is the workhorse here on our homestead. We use it for firewood, for clearing trails, for snow plowing. We're going to be using it to work on getting our pasture ready for sheep this year. It is important to our property. However, there's a little problem and it all stems from this guy right here. It's been a pretty mild winter, so I haven't had to do a lot of plowing here. It's been good, but it's also been bad because here in southeastern Michigan, we depend very heavily upon snowpack for our water table. So things are a little dry so far this year, but it looks like we're trying to make up for it all in this next week or so. Last week we had heavy ice storms where a lot of people in the area lost power. We didn't, fortunately, but we were prepared even if we did. Uh, but with this snow that's coming up, I've got to get the plow working and ready to, uh, to function here, and I can't do that right now. This is the end of the uh, winch cable, and this is the winch that came with our four-wheeler back when we bought it in 2019. So this has gotten a lot of use, but this is a big problem. Can you see that? This cable just snapped on us. Uh, and that's because we do primarily use this winch when we are plowing. So because of that, all of the tension and pressure is put on that first foot and a half of this winch cable. So it's time to replace it. I don't know about you guys, but we do watch some YouTube channels here on our homestead because, well, it gives us a way to uh, see what else is going on in the world, to learn uh, and to explore along with you guys. And one of our favorites actually is uh, from a channel out in Utah called Matt's Off-Road Recovery. If you're not familiar with it, check out the link below. Uh, and once you do, you're going to be hooked just like the rest of us. Well, we watch that channel, we enjoy it, and one thing that uh, Matt talks about on Matt's Off-Road Recovery, talks about a lot, is his synthetic winch lines. He wasn't a big winch fan until he found these. And uh, this isn't exactly the brand that he always uses, but this is the one we're going to be installing on our winch today. This is the uh, Badland Synthetic Rope and Fairlead Set. This is from Harbor Freight. Obviously, if you guys have watched any of our videos before, one of our favorite places to shop for tools and equipment because it, it's inexpensive, it is robust, it's got warranties, and you know, it's just all around a good deal. So this thing was, I think, 39 bucks, plus I had a 20% off coupon uh, as an Inside Track Club member, so I got this rather inexpensive. But, uh, I'm, I'm a little leery because I don't really know how the, well this is going to go on. I'm going to be working on this right with you guys, so uh, stay tuned. First thing we got to do is drop the plow off the four-wheeler so I can access the fair lead that's on there, get that old winch cable out, and then we're going to work on installing this one. bit to find the end of the cable here where it's broken because once it had gotten broken man it just went right back in there now now comes the fun part this is gonna be trying to get this thing off because ah, this thing is a pain and ah, the reason why I don't like these winch cables is because of all of these little wire splinters that come out Man, even through gloves, I'm just getting poked and prodded like a medical experiment. Ugh. 
So the only way to get this off is to kind of uh, turn off the gearing, freewheel it so that I can give it a yank. And ah, okay, work smarter, not harder. I got a pair of vice grip uh, pliers here and clamp that on and hopefully I can pull it right out. Oh, look at that tangled mess. Oh my gosh. Okay, that took a lot more effort than I expected. So basically, this fair lead is now junk. We're not gonna be needing that anymore. Come on down here, let me show you what we've got to contend with next. All right, so what we've got here is a three millimeter hex set screw. So we've gotta back that out enough to where we can get the cable out and then get the end of the new synthetic rope in here. Oh wow, it's not really torqued down as tight as I thought it was gonna be. I'm pleasantly surprised by that. And that's it. This cable, gone. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. I haven't even opened this yet to make sure this fair lead matches uh, on this winch. So uh, let's uh, get it open and uh, make sure it matches. Otherwise, I might have just caused myself some problems. All right, what do we got? Ah, perfect fit. All right, good. Now, one concern I do have, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna overcome this yet, if it is a concern, uh, but as you can see, this fair lead is going to recess further into the fascia of my ATV than the previous fair lead. So the previous fair lead uh, stuck out, that top, that bottom roller stuck out almost an inch and a half from the surface of the winch here. This one only gives me about half an inch. So there's the difference from that to that on the surface. So I've got my fascia plastic here on the four wheeler, sticks out almost uh, an inch and a half from this surface. So what I'm gonna have to do is space this out a little bit, uh, probably get some longer bolts here and space this out so that I can clear the fascia of my, uh, my Sportsman 450. Because if I don't do that, I'm gonna wear a hole on the bottom edge of the fascia uh, running the rope up and down for the plow because this just goes directly down to the lift point on the plow. So that's, that's my concern here. So I, I've got to build this up uh, about half an inch at least to get the clearance I'm looking for. All right, so just to get these fair lead bolts out so that I can put longer ones in, I've got to pull the winch. Wasn't looking forward to that today. Oh well, gotta do what you gotta do. Well, Murphy's Law strikes again. Pulling out the winch so that I could get those fair lead bolts replaced and uh, the positive terminal broke off uh, inside the winch. Now I gotta drill and tap that out. Oh, this day kish keeps getting better. <laughs> and I gotta get all this done before the snow starts falling. Okay, well, um, I guess I'm just gonna work on the fair lead until I can steady myself enough to worry about drilling out that broken stud in the winch. Uh, until then, um, good thing I buy washers by the pound at our local hardware store because uh, I need to 
space this out by about well, at least a half an inch maybe more so uh, time to start stacking washers I know using washers like this probably isn't the best but there's not gonna be a lot of forces on this um, they're just gonna be that downward pressure uh, and we're using some hardened uh, bolts and nuts here so I think we'll be okay and we're using a, a rather large surface area washer here so that we're not going to get a lot of twisting. But you know what, sometimes you just have to hack things together until you can come up with a better solution. Uh, probably what I'll do sometime during the summer is I will get a couple plates cut that match um, this area here just a little bit more. Uh, but for now, this is, this is the best solution I have. leads in now but while we've got the winch out let's go ahead and just do a test fit of the synthetic rope here and make sure that the intended end will work here and if it fits it ships right all right, so we've done that work. I'll come back to you guys once I get this stud taken care of. Okay, well that was fun. Um, I wasn't able to drill the stud out uh, because uh, unbeknownst to me, these are a direct um, stud that goes directly to the brushes inside and it's soldered onto, so there's no way to drill it out. Luckily for me, I had an older uh, Harbor Freight 2500 winch that uh, I have just sit around as utility winch for when we need to pull things in and out of the trailer or whatever. And the brushes were a direct match for this um, Culpin 2500 pound winch. So save myself by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Glad I didn't shave yet this week. Okay, let's get this thing slapped back in and then it's gonna be time to get the new synthetic rope on. Get everything finger tight and then we'll tighten it down with the ratchet. Now this may have been easier if I would have just pulled the fascia off the four-wheeler, but it seems like the more I take stuff apart, the more I'm breaking stuff. So I decided just to do it the hard way. Okay, so now comes the fun part. I'm trying to feed this through this itty bitty fair lead uh, back into the mounting hole and then getting everything tightened down. So what I'm doing is I'm going through the fair lead, pulling it down underneath the fascia here, making sure that I'm not wrapping around anything. I'm gonna come back into this mounting hole here and then we're gonna tighten it down. All right, uh, it's time to get start getting this thing wound on and making sure that it's going the right way in and out. And then I'll have one of the kids come out here and run the in and out while I pull on the end of the cable to make sure that we get the right amount of tension on here as it's going in so that it gets a nice tight wind. So I got my helper out here to run the, uh, the winch from the four-wheeler. I'm gonna grab it about 20 foot out Put uh, some resistance on it while he pulls it in, and then we'll also make sure that it goes in left and right. All right, go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and start the four-wheeler because uh, I don't want the battery to die from all this energy it's using. All right, and then turn the key. Too late, battery's already dead. <sighs> Murphy's Law, Murphy's Law. Okay, that was fun. We got jump started, and 
Now it's time to start winching in again. All right. Faster. Yeah, a little faster now. That the battery's got a little more energy, huh? Now this isn't the best method for putting tension on it. I probably should just like drive to a tree. But uh, all right, go ahead and pull the four wheeler in in order to get the right tension on it. But I'm being kind of lazy right now. Well, that wraps up an eventful Friday morning as we prepare for, I think they're calling it Snowmageddon in March. It's, uh, it's gonna be a lot of snow from what they're saying. Of course, you know, the forecast could be wrong, but we wanna be prepared either way. The new winch line is installed. So far, I'm happy with it. About the only hiccup I see is, while I like the sheath, I like the idea of it, I'm concerned that it might cause some binding uh, when we're using it at longer uh, intervals. But for just this short-term intervals, only coming out just a few feet to attach the plow, I think it's gonna be very beneficial as the time goes on here. Well, we are all done. We've gotta head out to the pond and uh, rescue the uh, garden tractor that got stuck yesterday while the boys were collecting sap. I'm not blaming anybody But they chose a very muddy path Anyway, we got to get it done before the weather sets in so we got to get the Get the lawnmower rescued get the plow back on and be ready for snow tomorrow We really appreciate you joining us uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates. And uh, make sure you go out and do something today to cultivate freedom in your life. And until next time, God bless.